What you been working on, Dave? Uh, got the power assistant here for, uh, what do you want to call this? The chute on the blower. Yeah. Um, this articulates it up and down. There's an option to do a hydraulic function, but this already had the electric, so we just wired it into the tractor. Actually, I don't think there is any option for hydraulic. I think this is an aftermarket kit. Well, Who, whoever the original we could owner. have come up with a hydraulic option. That has okay. the third function, I think is what it's called, right? Yeah. Okay, so you've got that wired, and you've got a nice little plug right here. Yep, yep. And you've got that wire ran... Wow, I can't even see the wire. That's what's so cool about no, it. It's, it's tucked up in there quite nicely. We had to punch a hole through the, I guess you want to call it firewall or whatever. That's Put right a little rubber right. grommet on it. Got some RTV, just kind of hold it in there. Okay, so that's the RTV you did to kind of seal that a little bit. Yeah, just to try and hold the, this is kind of thicker steel and the grommets we had weren't quite perfect. So we're just trying to kind of hold it in there a little bit. And then okay, the wire well. comes up and over. There was two options as a location for the switch. We had here and here. Uh, went ahead and mounted it over here. But we've got enough wire, we can route it over here if needed. So you've just got an add a fuse right here yep. on the fuse block. Went right in, picked a 30 amp fuse. It's uh, also for the work lights, but this tractor has LED work lights, so we're making the assumption that's not gonna pull too many amps. Uh, it was only rated for 10 amps, I believe, on that one fuse. And actually, the way that add a fuse works is the 30 amp is still in line with the regular system and it's just drawing power off the same power supply as that 30 amp. So we're not messing with the 30 amp circuit. We're just messing with the supply to the 30 amp circuit, if that makes sense. Yep. And so we've, we're still fused at 10 amps. That's mm -hmm. what the red one mm -hmm. is here down, hanging down here. And it runs right up here. That's just, an interesting butt connector. That's not one of my favorite styles. Uh, it's what came on your add fuse. Oh, okay. No heat shrink, but it's internal to the cab. Shouldn't be too big of an issue. Yeah. Okay, and then, okay, and then this nice is the little, switch. Yep. And I even made sure that it's wired correctly. So up is up and down is down. Look at that. What do you think, Izzy? Has he sat there the whole time? Absolutely. He was there when I left for lunch, and he's uh, still there when I came back. So, couldn't move. Okay, well, while we're here, while we've got all this apart, we really need to work on that throttle cable that I, well, pushed a little too hard. Showed you that in an earlier episode. Um, but I think, had we read the service manual, we haven't even looked at the service manual now, but we just took a peek in here this morning. And I think as you look at this, we could have prevented this. So right in here, this bar has slots. So we could have adjusted that so that it would keep the, the throttle from going up any higher and would have protected that cable. But we didn't know and we didn't try to read about it. You learn after you break something, right? For the rest of you guys, if, you, if your throttle cable needs adjusting, be sure to take this inside cowling off and uh, set that, set that uh, stop up there at the right spot. Let's get started on that, Dave. Uh, we ought to look at the service manual, Tim. There's another steer. There's a. There's another stop right here. High idle and low idle stop. So that just to, to set the actual high high and low idle. So yeah, we'll we'll we can adjust that when we're done, right? Uh, presumably, I suppose if that's. Yeah, yeah, that's just going to control. That's high idle, and then where it's sitting now is low idle. Correct, yes. Is this 13 the right one? Yep. And then that cable just goes right up and goes right through the firewall right there. Shouldn't be too hard here. It's still in the uh, bracket up here. It's not going to come out until it's out of that bracket. No, I don't think you can push it through it. Well, I guess you do have a push through. Now you gotta be able to pull it out. Now how are you gonna get, I guess just like that. You pulled grommet and all, didn't you? Yes. There you go, now pull. Don't get too crazy. Uh, pull that out your way, Tim. Oh, there's the ring. Way down there, the cat's found it. 
Really hope to see all of you at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, February 14 to 17, 2024. We'll be at the Deer Booth every single day at 11 a.m. We'll be at the Rhino Ag Booth, 8654, right in the thick of it, from 2 to 3 p.m. on Thursday. We'll also be at the Ventrac Booth at the times listed here. 1508 is the booth number. This is the best show for compact tractors. There's not a show fully dedicated to compact tractors, but this is better than any other in the country. I think you'll really enjoy this, and I know we'd really appreciate getting the opportunity to meet you and talk with you. Come on out. It's worth the drive, even if it's a long way. We'll see you there. Looks identical. We didn't check the length, but it still looks, uh, looks good. There's the inside piece mm -hmm. right there. And the outside piece right there. I suspect mine was worn pretty hard. Uh, I'd say so. We might have to. Uh, this will be most of our adjustment right there, I think. When we get full throttle, we'll adjust that steering to the throttle stop so we don't bust it again. Interesting to see if that actually fits through there. Yeah, the cat's motivated now. Sure is. Too much hair and too much hat, Dave. I like the hair and I like the hat. Hmm. Feel free to voice your opinions in the comments. <laughs> Won't change mine though. Okay. Yeah, I think that oh, was. That looks like that'll work. About there. I'll put that grommet back on there. I don't know. We could go behind this fuel line. I don't know if we want to though. I think we might have too much curve on it, and and this has a little bit of flex when you actuate the throttle, and if we put it there, we might end up rubbing a hole through that fuel line. Okay. So I'm thinking it'll it won't have that much flex and we tighten it down here anyway. No, no. It shouldn't have too much flex. Okay, cat. Don't let me cut it. I'm just trying to at least have a good They got better gripper. I think that's working. Be able to come back through these now. Yeah, I keep thinking your angled nipex might work about as well as anything. There we go. I think that worked out. Got her? I believe it's clipped in, yes. Okay. Push that rubber stop back on. Put that on. Washer. Oh, it had a little cutter pan of sorts? It's got a, a very, very, very small um, cut clip, do you call it? The, it's not a cotter pin, it's what you use on the hitch pins. Uh, oh, a spring key. Spring key, yeah. It's in. Now we're on to the outside. Well, that grommet being cut like that, it's gonna should make that pretty easy. Might have to figure out. No, I think I can get it in there. Fingers. I can get a little screwdriver if we need it. So that's what I think I had to go get. But I think. And she's in. All right. Good enough on that. I want the adjustments down here. So it looks like we got another one of those clips. I believe you got it. This is the broken end Dave's trying to take off. The oil leak, oil leak you see here is uh, most likely a bunch of these hydraulic lines blew when he was out. I don't want to say abusing, but utilizing the tractor to its full potential. Uh, probably the abuse part is unfortunately accurate. I mean, we really were overdoing it. We know it. And we even said so in the video. Skid steer would have been much better. Um, we didn't have skid steer. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make do with what you got. Anyway, I blew two or three different steering hoses. Kept catching them in brush and... Um, that's what all this oil is up in here. Okay, that's easy enough. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's tighten it like or adjust it like those the engine speeds are correct right now. And then we can look that up and adjust the engine speeds. 
if we need to. I suspect they'll be accurate. Might have to grab another wrench, Tim. I mean, Dave, this is going to be incredibly fancy if I can actually uh, adjust the throttle without having to replace a, a, a wood chunk with a different sized wood chunk. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Wood chunks will get it done. <laughs> Clearly, you, you got, well, I think you got what you were trying to get done done. I mean, the tractor made it back here without getting, I mean, I guess it did get towed home, but it was, we drove it into the shop, so. Yeah, it was still running. Let's check the throttle here. Is it pulling really hard? Uh, or were you just being really gentle? No, I was being very gentle. Okay. So it runs right up to the stop right there. So what I want to do, I'm going to adjust this just a little differently. Okay. Oh, it's it's hitting the stop inside? No, no, it's hitting the stop outside. Yeah. What I'm trying to do here is make sure that we've got room on both ends. Right. I don't know that we're hitting the low idle, are we? No, we're not. I gotta adjust it back down. I suspect bike mechanics are very good at this. This is the same kind of thing you do for the brake lines on a bike. I think we're there. Stop. Goes back to there. All right. So now we need to make the adjustment up in here, correct? Uh, let's fire it up and make sure it sounds good. Uh, you're on full throttle now. Adjusted. This piece slides and the idea is that it keeps you from pushing too far on this and snapping the throttle cable. Like I did. Um, so I currently have it set to full throttle. I've looked down at the adjuster screw and I'm touching on it. So we're just going to move it to where it stops this mm -hmm. and I'm just going to tighten it down and that should be sufficient. I guess if you snap another one, well, we'll, we'll do it right next time. <laughs> hey, if it can be broken. I'm probably going to break I was, it. I was told by a wise man, simply do better, that's all it takes. Okay. You don't have to be perfect, just do better. Better than last time. Maybe yep. eventually we'll get it good enough. Fire it up and test it one more time. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Key on. And you still have to get up to that same RPM, 28. A little higher, actually. Okay. Now that it's warmed up. All right. I like it. I do too. And I, we didn't cut any zip ties, so I guess that's just. Uh, that's where she, where she falls. She just hangs out there, I guess. Well, I thought we were recording all of this, but. All of Dave's handiwork of getting this put back together, we missed. Ah, but you'll get the last bit, which is the satisfactory part. Yeah. Right there, job well done. I should have pointed out the extra insulation we put in that firewall there. I don't know if it helps much, but it was one of those, part of the items we did to try to keep the cab a little cooler and a little quieter, so. How's that work with a five foot brush hog on the back? I have never had it on a five foot, but I've had it with uh, a 10 foot. Now, what's the, the, what was it you were using? 
Oh, the brush mulcher brush thing. Brush mulcher, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that five foot or? It's a four foot. It's, four foot, okay. And quite frankly, you hit one tree and it uh, stops abruptly. Stops making noise. <laughs> but I've had that happen with the 75 horse, with the 4075, so. Okay, let's see if we're still. Eight hundred. I like that. Uh, the book said nine fifty for the idols where they wanted it, but hey, I'm fine with this. It's, it doesn't vibrate. It's curves like a kitten. Yeah. Perfect. Twenty eight hundred. We didn't have any adjustment on the high idle. The service manual said that that was fixed per EPA carb rules. This would have been a tier three engine, I guess not tier four so uh, yeah so anyway we didn't have any adjustment on that which is fine because it goes above the PTO speed anyway 3672 hours now yeah the Done one thing there. I don't like about the switch though is uh, it's hot all the time it's hot all the time but I think that's just the fuse I picked we could flop that but it's not a big deal it's momentary right so I mean what I was going with that and that's still uh, that circuit makes sense to me. We got it on the light circuit, so that's. There was only one other 30 amp, and that was the ignition circuit. Well, I've had a little experience with that ignition circuit on the 3046R, and it does a lot of things. So I'm really not sure that we really wanted it on the ignition circuit. It's more than just ignition. Right. It basically means anything that's on when the ignition's on, or precisely, something like that. Precisely. I get have a little trouble getting this to stay in there. I feel like we could get one of these from Green Tractor Parts Store. Use code TTWT. Greenpartsstore.com. Gonna have to get you a hat, Dave. I think I have a hat. <laughs> Actually, it's not near big enough. I don't know if they make hats that size. I don't believe they do. I have not come across one yet. Maybe we need to get Green Parts Store to get some big cowboy hats. There you go. I'd wear one. Okay, Dave, next up I gotta show you about my hood. Your hood. Yes, my, my hood, or as they say in Europe, my bonnet. Ah, yes, the bonnet. My bonnet is, my bonnet lies over the ocean. Or is that my bonnie? Uh, bonnie lass, yes, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, here's what I did on the actual hood. I tore this out. Whatever I hit messed up my hood latch. The hood latch on this tractor has two, two actual latches. There's one over there, Dave's pushing with his thumb. And then there was one here, see? So every time you want to raise the hood, you pull up right here on one side or the other. Well, we broke this one off. So we got to take that apart, Dave. Yeah, we could try welding it, but it's kind of small and that's quite, quite clearly cast, so. Yeah, let's, uh, I, I got a new one. It wasn't very expensive. We just have to figure out how to get it apart. And it's spring-loaded over on that side. It's got some set screws in there, do you see? Where's the set screw? Oh, on each of the latches? Each of the latches has got a set oh, screw. Oh, do you think maybe if we te take those set screws out, we can slide the rod out? There? Uh, that's going to be the idea. Uh, but before we do it, we're going to spray them with some penetrating oil. Uh, what'd you say, 3,700 hours in a salty environment? Those aren't going to come out nicely. Turns out they weren't set screws. They were little roll pins. So we're trying to drive out those roll pins now. So you keep going, it's going. Yep. 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 The only thing I was looking at was the head of it back here. That's why I was waiting on you to. All right. I think we're through. I'm gonna let that off and this thing might spin kind of violently. Here, hold on, let's me give us some uh nipex on it. Actually you've already done it, haven't you? I'm holding it, but let's see now we gotta go one way or t'other with it. Well let's uh come this way with it oh, actually look at that okay yeah, yeah so we're going to be able to move so we want to go your way right so you could possibly tap it with that hammer and we possibly don't have to take it all the way off no that's exactly what i was thinking was we just tap it this way and then um i believe the rod's bent okay I think that's our pro. I may not be, but it. Uh, 
All right, all right, let me see that. Okay, there's the old one. You never lost the spring, even. Nope. All stayed now we have to nicely. find those roll pin holes again. Yes. Well, that may not be as bad as it sounds, actually. Well, how do you know left and right where you're going to find it on? Uh, I just kind of guessed on the shaft. Kind of guessed is not words that uh, work with a 30 second size roll pin. We'll get her in there. Actually, can you use your little light and shine it on that one? This little light of mine? Yep, that little light of yours. Can you see a hole yet? Yes. yes okay. Sir. Okay, so now we need to rotate it downward a little bit. I think that looks. Okay. Uh, I'm on back. Now, if we go into the point where the wear existed, right there, we might be close. The miracles work for you very often? Sometimes, yeah, actually. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, hold that right like that, and then I can give her a little tap. Oh, my goodness. It's working beautifully. catch everything but the back, didn't it? Probably not out the back hole yet. Probably not. Okay. All right, now we gotta get those pins in. Beautiful. Like that. I think we're good. Let's, uh, you wanna see if the hood closes? Now I had this wood stick in here because I was working around where this uh, normal hood latch works. Both sides are hooked. Yeah. And we can, let's see if we can release it from the new side. We can. Now hopefully you can see all this. We did all this off camera. It took us, the two of us, what, two hours? Uh, it was a good long time. I did it might have been an hour and a half, but to, we, we replaced this whole light. Of course, we used our new LED bulb, but mm -hmm. uh, the only way we could buy this cover was to get the whole light with bulb and all. This bezel here goes all the way across. It's, it's screwed into the screen, screwed up into the, to the bonnet. And new John Deere logo. Uh, that's all loose, Tim. Yeah, but yeah, I think this attaches to yeah, something that's tight. Does, you're good. So while you're in here, mm -hmm. let me get you those screws. Three of them have the washers. See these? One, two, yep. three. And then there's one that doesn't. Now, what's going on with the... I couldn't get the rest of them out because they just, they just go in they must just kind of seat halfway, you know, they were kind of, but, but the point is, is they're, they're torn out. Right. Well, I, so those are torn up. There's nothing I can do. So the screws are in, but they're not holding anything. They've redesigned these hoods on the three R's. Uh, they, they had to make changes because the hood's bigger. It's wider to hold all of the DPF and all of the tier four emissions, but they've changed it anyway. So now only the top of the hood comes up instead of the side pieces as well. So yeah, so here's what it looks like on the, the new one. The new one does have an auto shock here. So it holds itself up. Well, I guess it, it doesn't really have an auto shock. You, you, you kind of have to brace it as well. But the side panels come off separately, see? So that's the way the new ones work. In a lot of ways, the access is probably better on the new ones. Neither of them are perfect. Like I say, the problem with this one is, even though I want to just replace this, I have to pay over $50 for this new sticker, which I may have to anyway. We'll see how that goes. I just drove over those, we call them stobs, but, but chunks and sticks of wood 
And as the front tires would drive over them, it would turn them upward. And then I would end up running them up under the hood. And a lot of times I couldn't see them from the cab. Um, you know, yeah, I, I guess I could have seen them before I ever drove over them for, for that situation. But, you know, I was driving over a bunch of them. So, uh, you know, just saying I wasn't going to, I was going to dodge every one didn't seem practical. But I guess that's what I needed to do is just be very thorough about it and never drive over any of them, which is going to make it difficult. This is kind of expensive, $370 to get a new piece here and on either side. Now the other side is broken as well, but it was broken when I got it. Just a small break here. That was broken when I got the tractor. That's not new. I lost my draw bar, Dave. It happens. Well, I guess it does. I, I always keep that pan in from the bottom, right? And when I use the pin from the bottom, then when I put that key in, Any I guess I... Any point to lubing these at all, or...? Well, I decided not to. I was afraid it would just collect dirt. There's quite a bit of free play down here. Yeah, that's because it had all rusted out. Right? I, I Did you see those videos where I, I, I it was all that. rusted that was, together? Uh, that was substantial. That bar was very rusted, and you managed to clean it up, and it actually looks pretty good. Well, except for my new chips. Eh, that thing weighs 20 pounds. It can stand to lose an ounce or two. <laughs> so. Okay. That's the, uh, that's the new and improved lightened version. They've, okay. Uh, weight reduction, fuel savings. Okay, that's what it is then. <sighs> Go to shut the rear window. Then I break something else, Dave. Broke the handle so right here. Little Johnny's got an attitude today, old salty. Yeah, he's a little salty. Old Salty's a little salty. Yep, yep. I guess it was ready to go. Yeah. I didn't put that much on no, it. See, greenpartsstore.com. Use code TTWT. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to keep that place in business all by myself. <laughs> I think while I was gone, Dave, looks like you've got the, the rest of the Otis Innovations. Then a dipstick put on here. Yep. So how does this work? Um, I just ran it up along through the side here. There's already several hoses already fitted here by John Deere. And actually, yeah. if you're looking at it, it blends in quite nicely. And I just ran yeah, it up it and right there, tied it? it right there. And that'll be well out of the water. And uh, gave a little extra there for the axle droop. So should be good to go. Well, that's all we've got for the repairs for this episode. Uh, we've got some more stuff we got to do. Now I've got that cab thing to buy. Rear, rear window latch and what else? Let's see, we've got uh, the hood to fix, we know. I'll come up with a few more things, but uh, we're, we're getting there. And pretty soon Old Salty will be back in the starting lineup. But I think that's it for now. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Dave, hope you've enjoyed it. It's always a lot of fun. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with Tim. Tim. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways.